What's up, Wolfpack fam? It's your boy, Kid, back at it again. Hope you're doing well. Continue that Robot Wars Extreme journey. Strap into your seats, get your snacks, kick back and relax. Uh, and if you are enjoying that content, hit that like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I'm hoping for some excitement, baby. Uh, let's get it. Snacks not included. Let's go. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. Once again, the best of the best have come to be pushed to the edge. They'll be worn down and sawn down as we test their metal in the name of destruction! I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. It's going to get loud! I said it's going to get loud! <laughs> because tonight, the most powerful, brutal fighting machines on Earth are on the warpath. The house robots. The house robots have rebelled. That's right, Craig. And at the top of the show, our main event, the House Robot Rebellion, pits three of the meanest house robots with three particularly brave or foolish challengers. In our vengeance grudge match, it's Ming-3 against Mega Morg. Tornado, the holders of the challenge belt, are challenged by coming Getterix. Oh, and then what a fight as the tag team Terror reaches the semi-finals. Thermidor 2 and Cerberus against Steel Avenger and Suicidal Tendencies. In our mayhem mash it up, it's Panic Attack, Shere Khan and Diator doing battle. And now we've got a challenge to find three robots to fight the house robots. Throughout the program, we'll be looking. Jules is in the pits on another mission. Well, I'm rushing to the scene of a fresh incident in the pits. Something has been irretrievably broken. I'm not talking about a robot, not even a flywheel, something far more important. It's Megamorgs pride. Team, why so sullen? Well, it's absolutely amazing, I've got to say. Last wars, fourth wars, we had a battle with Ming. We went into that war because uh, Scar couldn't continue. We fought them, they broke down. I mean, they've said no, they won, we won by default. Because it shouldn't have been in the fight in the first place. Exactly. And but you beat them fair and square. Fair and square, they broke down. I mean, it's default. Default. Every time he breaks down, he loses. It's a default. Exactly. Break down, you lose. So you're not like, happy. Your honour has been oh, splattered. Hurt is, is an understatement. It's almost as bad as in cold English. Almost as bad. All right, maybe it's a bit. We better harsh. see that fight. <laughs> Well, no doubting that Ming was the better robot at the start. Morg, the yellow robot, tumbling and turning. Ming very much on top in that heat battle. But then they broke down there. And the rules say, Andrew Cottrell, if you break down, you lose. No wonder the Morg pride is dented. There's the proof. Ming in the pit, beaten. They won. And now Andrew says he wants revenge. Right. What's this about you saying Megamorg have got no honour? Yeah, well, this is a throwback to the last wars. We had a battle with them, and uh, we were throwing them all over the place. We turned them over, got right to the end of the battle, and uh, we lost power. So we did technically lose. But then the house robots came in and did their dirty work for them. And, you know, well, I'd, I'd like to have a chance to kick their butts, really. Well, I think Megamorg have got something to say about that. Come on, boys. I'd like to say something, actually. I mean, you spend all this money on these wonderful costumes, and we, we are the winners, right? I don't know why they put people like you in against people like us. We are the winners. Well, you were a loser. Well, we have technicality, only on a technicality at the end. I think what we ought to do is we ought to get out there and actually sort this out. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, well, let's get outside now. Let's get it, boys. 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 Let's get it, well, I'm not going to argue. It's vengeance. Let the wars begin. Real quick, how the hell they let that... You, you guys probably couldn't see it, but uh, you probably already saw it anyway with the sheep going on, doing their business in the background. They were rocking a little bit too much, man. You got a lot of kids watching this at that time. Holy shit. <laughs> From 
Somerset, Ming Reed. That's a crusher arm, similar to Razor's, a lifting arm at the rear, just the heavier of the two at 99 kilos, quicker at 15 miles an hour. The nose cone is motor driven as well. Hi, I'm Andrew, this is Alexander, this is Oliver, and we are Team Ming. We're here, fresh from the planet Mongo, ready to wreak havoc on any pathetic earthlings that should happen to get in our way. From Penn Cluid, Megamore. Has pneumatic spikes which lift and shunt. Two 630 watt motors can drive up to 10 miles an hour out of this. They describe the shape as a, a rollover design. My name is Dorian Cordy. This is Mark Cooper and Faceman Hugh White. We are the boys from the mall. This is our robot mega mall with our gargoyle on the front and our ninja sheep. We're coming to your town. We know where you live. Well, I'm all fear, man. Stand by. I think we're going to go with uh, Ming 3. I, I didn't see if it said if it had the self writing mechanism on it. Um, I, I always like the, the Ming crew right there, especially with those outfits. The Ming team, Andrew Cottrell and Sons Alexander and Oliver, and there's Dory and Cordy and Mark Cooper with Megamore. The house road was dead metal with the dual electric motors, the pincer and the saw. And alongside in the arena, Sir Killalot with the crushing claws. Is it invincible? We think so. Three. The Mork making the first move, and Ming turns and spins and comes in very razor-esque, isn't it, with that beak? Well, you're going to copy someone, copy the best, and look at this! The razor just cutting straight through Mega Morg's shell, already puncturing the rollover design of the... Let's call it English. Let's insult. No, they're Welsh. The Morg team, Dorian Cordy and Mark Hooper have their work cut out to stay in this now it's slow it's punishing it's penetrating ming looking for revenge don't forget in this andrew cottrell says they were beaten on a technicality theirs is the better robot at the moment they certainly look as if they are they haven't broken down again have they no they're okay oh, get up to 15 miles an hour ming when it gets going they're just edging megamorg off the arena floor Round clearance of uh, 0 0.3 centimetres on the morgue. It's tentative so far. Respect for one another. It was all a little bit of joshing in the pits, perhaps. <laughs> These boys, sense of humour. <laughs> and uh, Ming in the corner, in the corner patrol zone. Oh. There's Mega Morg being flicked up by Killalot. And there's the siren. And that'll... <laughs> They're going to have to do some repairs out there. The siren, of course, means... The pit is descending. Someone go out there and make the <laughs> make the repairs. Good old dead metal, a little bit of tidying up there. Well done. A little bit of housekeeping. Kill a lot. Look, was nearly off balance by the weight of Mega Morg. But Mega Morg very nearly in the pit and so too dead metal. He's supposed to do the tidying up dead metal. Not go in the rubbish chip yourself. Jesus. Silly old thing. Mega Morg away from Kill a lot. Well. Is Ming going to win this one because the morgue is still standing? There's the uh, pneumatic lifting forks in the front, trying to get underneath the, the, the wheel of Ming, look. Didn't work, comes back in with a bash. You can see the damage caused on Mega Morg. There is damage here and there. Again, razor-type wing, side wings, used perhaps as a, a self riding oh, yeah, mechanism. Yeah. And Dead Metal comes in now and takes on Ming! Into the last 10 seconds we go. It's closer than I thought it was going to be. I thought Mega Morg were beaten very early on, but they've stuck to the task well. Gritty. We'll go to the judges. Torin Cordy and Mark Cooper will have to watch and wait. And Andrew Cottrell and the Ming team will wait for their decision. So who was the more aggressive? I think Ming, who caused the most damage. I think Ming... The more stylish robot, I think Ming, but Mega Morg was still there at the end. That wasn't good driving by Ming into that CPZ. And that was great fun. Side by side. Well, the judges have made their decision, looking at style, control, damage, and aggression. And they've gone for Ming 3. Woohoo!
So what went wrong there? Well, it's, you know, for fairness sake, really, we let him, we let him win, you know. We you tried, to even it up a little bit, Absolutely. We, we, tried to, uh, we tried to make him look good, you know. Do you believe that? Yeah. I don't think they believe that. And he spent so much on his costumes and things like that, see, so we had to let him win. Bless him. It's nice to see that uh, Razor has been welded on top of Ming too, hasn't it? I was going to get to that. <laughs> I was going to get to that because actually, actually, you lost the last yeah, fight because yeah. yeah. you broke down, didn't you? That's right, yeah. But your robot's completely different now. Where, where was the inspiration for that robot? Uh, nothing to do with Razor at all. It wasn't anything to do with <laughs> the world nothing champion? To nothing to do with Razor at all. How did they react when, when you nicked their idea? Well, they, they actually, it, they, were, they were quite pleased because, you know, I mean, it's uh, quite flattering for them to have somebody else that looks it's like something an, like... It's like a homage. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was a good idea, you know, it works. And I want to do something which is a bit more original than a, you know, a flipper, or which I did before. And, uh, you know, the piercers different there's not many piercers out there so it's, it you know. certainly did work in fact yeah. it worked really very well yeah, it wasn't too you bad. won the vengeance battle you won the grudge match ladies and gentlemen please raise the roof for ming three <laughs> all right guys well done we got razor's cousin to get us going because tonight the house robots have come out of the sidelines and they want some action. It's our house robot rebellion! <laughs> so, Julia, any teams with the guts to take them on? Come on. Well, Craig, not yet. I mean, would you go up against the house robots? I don't think so. I would. But there is a team here tonight, come and get a Rex who I think just might have the metal for it. Team, what do you reckon? House what? robots, piece of cake? We've shown we've got the metal to go for the house robots. You've already shown that, have you? That's not the challenge. The challenge is to go for the challenge belt. Oh, OK. Oh. So you want the challenge belt from Tornado, who fought long and hard to win it off Beer Moth. Why? The belt will look good on our bench. So have you got a final message? There's a new challenge afoot. Tornado, are you listening? Tornado, Tornado we're, we're going to get, get you. <laughs> The challenge belt was first awarded to Bearmoth by the World Association of Robotics War. They saw off Steel Avenger very nearly out of the arena and then beat Stinger to hold on to the belt once again. Then just when it looked as if they were going to get a third victory to keep the belt outright, Tornado blew them away. They now hold the War Challenge belt. Come and get it. Come and get her it. From Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire, Tornado. Yeah. Can really whip up a storm with a vertically mounted 2000 RPM 15 kilo spinning disc. It's four kilos heavier here and slower, but can push all day long. Hi, my name's Andrew Marchant. This is Brian Moss. This is David Gamble. We are Team Tornado. Remember how we pushed all the other robots around last year? Well, we're going to do the same this year, and this year we have this. Everybody beware. From the Isle of Wight, come and get her ex. As a lifting beam that works as a Sremek as well and is capable of lifting 200 kilos. There's an axe too. This is the remodeled Robot Wars veteran versing getter ex, which came, saw, but was conquered. Hi, we're team come and getter ex this year. We were versing getter ex. This is Ian, team captain. I'm Alistair, and this is the sleeping partner, Tom. Amongst our weaponry, we have a lifter, sarcasm written on the front, and an axe, so that people will get the point. Roboteers. I feel like there's a tornado coming through. We're rocking with tornado. It's fierce, it's feisty. I love it. Let's go. Stand by. That's the Tornado team, Big Andrew Marchant in the middle. And Ian Gear at the controls of coming Getrix. So kill a lot again in the arena. Woo. Petrol driven engine, very big and heavy. And alongside our other house robot, Shunt. Will it push Tornado away? That'll be interesting. Three, two, one. <laughs> Tornado really can shove and is very durable. Head on collision there with Cumming Getrix, and look at that power! The four wheels really getting some traction. Tornado immediately on the attack, 
And come and get it's in trouble here from Shunt against the arena sidewall, bashed out of the CP set. The ref bot looking on tornado again, revving up to have another onward rush, an onslaught up to 10 mile an hour top speed tornado. So Killer Lock with the blinking eyes has a look. Come and get it, can't really get going at the moment. I think that initial shove by Tornado really took the wind out of Come and get her sails. And that 2000 RPM spinning disc hey. is causing problems. Goodness me, what was that that came off? Let's have a look at it again. Something flies off. Oh, Come and get it. Came right towards the camera then. That looked painful. Look at the damage course on the side of Come and get it here by the Tornado weapon. We've talked throughout this series of Extreme about the pushing power of Tornado. We haven't really talked a great deal about that weapon until now. Oh, come and get her, it is axed by Shunt. There's the pit release button. Good control and driving skills throughout by Tornado. They've been so impressive in this series. Come and get her, it when it was a brave and worthy challenge by Ian Gear and Alistair and his son Tom, but uh, it's going to come to naught, I fear. Their lifting sort of arm has done very little damage. Tornado again at Rod. The lifting arm flicks up in the air. That's the one that can lift 200 kilos, they say. But Tornado just getting in behind, look. Angling for another push. Just a nudge here and there. Come and get it away from the arena side wall, but very, very dangerously close to that pit. And I thought Tornado was going to get a broadside attack there. Come and get it, reversing away, so good driving there just to get away from peril in the immediate. But they're between two angle grinders on the side wall of the arena, they're in peril. They know it. It's a kill lot, with a little touch, a little tickle of that great claw. And again, pushing towards shunt teamwork by the house robots. And come and get it, is facing inevitable defeat, we know that. Tornado. Again, another ram on the side! Whoa! It's just toppled down in the end. And Tornado is freaking fierce, man. Jesus. Three Tornadoes. They hold on to that challenge belt once again. Come and get her, X. Come and get her if you think you're hard enough. The winners and still the holders of the Extreme Challenge belt are Tornado! Very fluffy, very lovely. Do you want some later? <laughs> it's about as odd as your robot. They're still together. Um, tell me, I mean, what made you think you could take on the Tornado Boys holder of the Extreme Challenge belt? Yes, sir, you want to say something? Yeah, we saw the belt, we decided we didn't want it, so that we let them push them around. <laughs> oh, really, really, really bad losers, it seems here. Jesus. Um, what is it? It's not what it's made of. Yeah. It's what it represents yeah. that counts. Oh, oh yeah. see, yeah. You see. And, and, yeah, you did miss the point actually, because apparently to fight for the belt you have to be hard. And um, you're about as hard as this squirrel, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. In fact, Weak. I give that to Tornado, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for the brave challengers. Come and get a Rex. <laughs> well, you said it. It's not what it's made of, although I think it's fairly funky. It's what it represents, and it means that you're a hard robot, and he's just a soft, fluffy squirrel. Yeah, they put down the challenge, and they lost. I know. Do you know, though, that you're going to have an awful lot of robots now coming at you, all wanting to have a go at Team yeah. Tornado? It doesn't particularly worry us. Um, we're going to get beaten eventually, but the longer we hold on to it, the better. We don't want to let go of this. You, you want to keep this belt, don't you? Like yeah. we said before, bring them on. Bring them on, ladies Please. and gentlemen, Team Tornado! Just bring it. Team Tornado, we've just come out of the arena with Come and Getterix. They issued us a challenge, we won. We've still got the belt. Anybody else wants to challenge us? Bring it on. <laughs> it's a dangerous night to be a robot. Because for the first time ever, our house robots have rebelled. They want to do away with rules, CPZs, ref bots, and mercy. And take on three teams in an all-out fight. So, Julia, anyone crazy enough to do this? Yeah, yeah. Well, believe it or not, Craig, I have found a team 
with the metal for it. It's the one and only, the mad Thunderbirds. What's the plan, boys? Well, we're going to go straight in. We're going to take out the house robot. And then it's on to the other two. But don't tell anyone. Well, Craig, they certainly seem up for it. And hopefully I'll find two more natters later on. Thanks, Julia. And what a bust-up that's going to be. Hey, hey, bring it on. But now... Four of our robots need to get down and dirty yeah. in the first of our tag team semi-finals. This for a place in the final. The Jaw and Claw, Thermidor 2, the Lobster and Cerberus, the Dog, against the Shine and Wine of Steel Avenger and Suicidal Tendencies. What a battle. Thermidor and Cerberus look very impressive in their first round battle against something and Smitty, something leapt and hopped and Smitty fell. And the Tendencies and Steel Avenger fought against Napal and Sacromalot. A sort of rags to riches team, really, and they were no opposition whatsoever. Napalm tossed out of the arena to leave the Steel Avenger and Suicidal Tendencies going through. Well, Jonathan, these tag team battles are never pretty, but this could be really ugly because they're fighting for a place in the final. It's the Steel Avenger and Suicidal Tendencies up against the Dog from Hell and the Lobster. Is that scary? I don't think so. I reckon it'll be dog and seafood on the menu. OK. <laughs> Do you think you're a good match for their match? Yeah, I think we're uh, pretty well matched. Or a bit better. I okay. think we'll have the edge. So the pairings are quite even, but we think we've got the edge here. Team, have you got a message for the opposition? On the flame pit, lobster thermidor. Mm, sounds delicious. Well, team, the opposition certainly want a piece of you. What have you got to say in reply to that? Well, we're going to get a big piece of them and we're going to stick it where the sun don't shine. Talking, talking. But do you think you really are a good match for them? We are. They've got no chance. Yes. Well, the time for talking is over. Let's get stuck in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my, here's my fear. I'm very impressed with Thermidor. Not so much with the dog. Uh, the other two teams' romance is just okay as well. It's like, it's crazy because I want to root for Thermidor. But I don't really like Sarah, uh, you know, the, the dog. Uh, so that that's the tricky part. I'm going to rock with Thermidor because we actually have been impressed with that robot. But uh, his partner, no offense, it's kind of whack, man. Leave it at that. From London, Cerberus. The crushing jaw of a bull terrier, the slashing claws of a lion, and the ramming tail of a rhino. It's a growling, prowling dog of war, all right. Hello, we are Team Cerberus. I'm Theo. This is Alex. This is Vass. This beast is Cerberus and is ready to tear the opposition to pieces. We are the most dangerous machine. We are so dangerous, they keep us in a cage. From Costasy in Norwich, Norfolk, Thermidor 2. Very impressive in extreme so far. The pneumatic CO2 flipper is devastatingly powerful. The claws will drag opponents on with 95 kilos slamming into you at 50 miles an hour. This Thermidor is tasty. We're Team Lobster. My name's Dave. This is Ian. This is our robot Thermidor 2. We're angry. We're ready for a fight. Keep out of our way. From Bretzel in Derby, suicidal tendencies. Sturdy, heavy, steady at 10 miles an hour. Designer Andrew Jeffrey collects tanks in his garden so he knows how to build a tigerish challenger then. Hi, we're Team Suicide. I'm Charles Binns, this is Andrew Jeffrey, and that's Martin. And this is Suicidal Tendencies. This year we have 26 tonnes of crush. The only robot we're scared of is this one. Let the carnage begin! Yeah! yeah! From Holton St. Mary, Steel Avenger. Two electric motors give a top speed of 15 miles an hour to this trusty steed. An axe won't miss peeling back the shell of opponents, so watch out for the Avenger. I'm John Willoughby, and this is Jackie, and this is Tony. This is our robot, the Steel Avenger, and we are Team Steel Avenger. We've come along here to do some serious damage to other robots and kick some serious robot. Roboteers, stand by. 
John and Jackie Willoughby there on the right hand side of the Steel Avenger and Ed and Charles with Suicidal Tendencies and they're the Cerberus and Thermidor teams and the house robots in the arena as well, Sir Killalot. The claws that crush the lance, oh. the spears! And alongside Sergeant Bash with the long range flamethrower. Three, two, one. Starting off in this tag team terror semi final suicidal tendencies and Cerberus there on the left hand side. Gleaming steel machines crash and crunch and back away. And Steel Avenger comes in with that 26 tons of crushability. Cerberus growling and prowling and moving away. And there's the tag. Although I must admit, Thermidor 2 came a long way out in the arena. I'm not too sure if they have tagged legally. Well, the ref had a look, so everything's okay. And Thermidor. Oh. Into the corner, into the CPZ. It's bad oh. driving by the Thermidor team, that's for certain. Cerberus, again tagging Thermidor. It's almost as if they're trying to have a go at one another. The old right. claw and paw, or claw and raw, claw and jaw, whatever you like to call it. So we've got two in the middle there, Thermidor and Cerberus. Take on suicidal tendencies and the Steel Avenger which is there on the left-hand side. Meanwhile, back in the CPZ, suicidal tendencies getting to grips. It's absolute mayhem. There's only supposed to be two robots out there at any one stage, and not for one moment in the semi-final has that happened. Cerberus to attack there, the Steel Avenger. You can just see the back there of Bats on the left-hand side, controlling Cerberus, comes in on the attack on his teammate again, Good. Thermidor. Well, I, I don't know what's happened to that team because they've been at each other all the way through this tooth and nail. And it, of course, leads now the Steel Avenger to come in and uh, attack Thermidor, who I think have been immobilised. I don't know whether the engines have conked out. They're on the flame pit. They're being counted out. They've been counted out. They're the red card shown by the ref bot. That's it. Thermidor have gone, which leaves Cerberus fighting a lone battle now with Steel Avenger. Nibbling. Annoying at the back of Steel Avenger. Both robots have to be immobilized, of course, to go out. There's the oh. pit descending into the Steel Avenger. Very nearly drove itself in. Pit, pit, pit. They want one to go down. Well, we know Thermidor's not long for this world. About to head down to Davy Jones' locker. Oh. Kill and bash in close attendance there. Cerberus is clawed by the Steel Avenger. Oh, look at the hole in the back of Thermidor. Jesus. And they look so good and strong and agile and nippy. In this series of extremes so far. <laughs> the Steel Avenger, the back of Thermidor there, which of course now is food for the house robots. So it, at one stage, was a bit of surf and hurf, 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 but no longer the surf. Bit has got Thermidor through the air, oh, crashes down on the Steel Avenger. In comes also suicidal tendencies. Let's have a look at this again. Off the arena floor flipper. Actually crashed down. I don't think it caused any danger whatsoever or damage to the Steel Avenger there with the feather dust Jeez. and the trademark at the back. And Cerberus has just hung on to take it to a judge's decision. Well, very close. Too close to call. We're going to the judges while they decide. Let's see the highlights. Highlight. Cerberus came on the attack very early. Now, that was the confusion about the tagging, which allowed Thermidor to come out and immediately got into trouble in the CPZ. Never recovered. And because of that, for me, there can't be any doubts here, surely. The judges have made their decision be the other based team. on style, control, damage, and aggression. And yes, we're having seafood tonight because they've gone for suicidal tendencies and Steel Avengers! I can't believe it! What can't you believe? We lost! You were battered! No, it's two of them! I said it was close, but I was no, only joking! No, you mate! Right. We had them, they were on the run! I only said they it was were close. going down! I said it was close to, you know, get a bit of tension going, no, no, you were no, well no. and truly no, splattered! No, sorry, mate! Have you enjoyed yourselves, oh, though? Yes, we had a good time. Yeah, what about your team? Yeah, we you win, Michelle, by the way. Well, <laughs> if we had a broke down, we'd have had it for sure. So they were lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they reckon you were lucky. Well, you know, we started off okay, sizing each other up. And then uh, Thermidor came out after us as well. So know, Steel yeah, Avenger jumped yeah, in, yeah. the Axis started flying. The rules don't really apply no, in this game, do no, they? It's eh? war. Yeah, but they were well and truly lobstered, weren't they? Eh? Thermidor. They yeah. were. They were. Yeah. So you're through. 
the fight? Finals, yeah. The tag team fight? Yep. You feeling strong? Yes. Yeah. You feeling brave? Yes. Yeah. You feeling bold? Yes. Let's hear it for suicidal tendencies and steal Avenger! I ain't gonna lie, I hope this picks up a little bit because this episode so far is a little bit on the boring side. So that confirms it. Steel Avenger and Suicidal Tenses through to the tag team Terra Final. It's goodbye to Thermidor and Cerberus. Madam, tonight we've got a rebellion on our hands. The house robots are ready to decimate, yes, decimate any robot who fancies their chances? Plunderbird? Ha! I've already offered themselves up. But, right. Julia, has anyone else got the bottle? You've got the ball. I am in awe of this team. They have offered themselves up to take part in the House Robot Rebellion. Are you mad? No, we've got a plan. We're going to go in. We are going to mash the House Robots up on our own. Then we're going to take out the other two but don't tell anyone. Have we heard that someone before? Yeah. Craig, so far, up against the house robots, we've got Thunderbird and Stinger, and I've found a third team oh, mad God. enough. It's the Scorpion team. What's the plan, boys? Well, we're going to take on the house robots, and when we're done with them, we're going to take on the other two. Mm. But please, Jules, don't tell anyone. They are all mad. Brave people. And they're going to need every minute they can get to prepare for that battle. Which gives us time to, um. Well, listen, guys, what do you want? An action. All righty then. Mayhem, it is. That's a fun, man. Excitement. The metal mashing mayhem. Three robots fight. One survives to go through to the Annihilator later in the series. Who will it be? Panic Attack, Shere Khan, or Deator? Two of the teams that are about to fight against each other are now having a little chat. This is extraordinary. Kim from Panic Attack, what are you doing? Talking to the well, opposition? It's the first time we've had a chance to look at it, and uh, I wish I'd stayed over there now. <laughs> <laughs> so you've come for a little snoop, and you wish you hadn't done it. Why? Yeah. Well, we've fought a weapon like this before, and it's really destructive, and this one sounds worse. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep away from that indefinitely. OK. <laughs> and the Shere Khan team? Shere Khan, yes. You've got him scared. That's a very good thing. But then again, he's the title holder from uh, one of the series, so... Exactly. We, we're a little bit worried, but I'm glad he's scared. Good. <laughs> so have you got a strategy, you guys? Yeah, we're going to get Deator in. And they can take him on, and we'll just sit there and have a good shunt, I think. <laughs> He'll be lucky. <laughs> From Thornhill in Cumbran, Gwent, panic attack. Deator on the start. Champions of the Second Wars, twice semi-finalists, polycarbonate and bulletproof fiberglass shell with added wide skirts now, lifting forks, durable and dangerous. From Glomdalkin, Dublin, <laughs> in Ireland, Deator. A fur-lined, fun-filled, fantastic feline-spotted folk hero from Ireland. Not fast, not dangerous, not secure. I love it. From Portishead in Bristol, Sheer Khan. Will this keep its head while all around are losing theirs? The weaponry, a rock chisel at the front, and that 12 kilo moving drum at the back covered in tiger teeth. Roboteers, stand by. It's going to be a tough one here, but I'd like either Panic Attack or Shira Khan to, to win this one. Either or is fine with me. Peter Edmund at the controls of Dieter on the right, and Kim and Michael Davis on the left hand side of Panic Attack. There's the Sheer Khan boys, Richard Radford and Christopher Martin. The house robots, Matilda with the flywheel and the tusks. More dangerous this time around. And Shunt. Can anything push harder than Shunt? Dear Tor with the picture of Panic Attack on the front. 
down immediately. There's the rock chisel. Look like a little snake tongue coming out of the front of Shere Khan. Did you see that? You can't have failed to, and you can't have failed to have seen this again, dear Tor. <laughs> On the flame pit, which has left the picture of Panic Attack. Rather cooked. Shere Khan up on the edge of Panic Attack and flipped up and over when it's got the weaponry, but it does not have the control, nor a Sremek, and they're in major trouble here now, Shere Khan. Over they go. That was a good drive by Panic Attack. It actually uses those side skirts as an offensive weapon. Well, also, now on Deer Tour, that's the counting out of Shere Khan. I'm so disappointed because the weaponry looks devastating. And over go Deer Tor. Well, they've got the spring loaded bucket scoopers. Finally, Shere Khan are red carded. They're out. They've got the bucket scoop there, let Deer Tor. So potentially they can self right, but I don't think they're going to here. The pit descends. Deer Tor crashes down, helped out a little bit by Panic Attack. Or have they been? Because Ken Davis has them on the forklift. And they're now being dredged and dragged. Dear tour towards doom and gloom. That's it. And therein lies oblivion. Very controlled performance by Panic Attack. They're through to the Annihilator later in the series. Good stuff, Kim Davis and that machine. Well done. Shit, Khan. So disappointing. Had the weaponry, but nothing else. Look at this on the floor, Flipper. Way! Tiger, it. Tiger, burning bright for you, I'm afraid. It's a disappointing. Good night! Well, Cease has been called, but Shunt has a little bit of tidying up to do. Deer Tour in the pit. Shere Khan about to go down as well. Panic Attack has a little nudge on Shunt. That's great. Look at this. They're trying to topple right. Shunt. Certainly got the weapons wedged in hard underneath. Shunt will not like this in the house robots. Kim Cease. Davis have long memories. Cease oh. called again. That means Cease Panic Attack. I.E. Stop. Desist. Finish. End. Yellow card. You're lucky to survive with just that. Shit on. All the bite of a cartoon tiger. Deator in the pit of oblivion. Panic attacker through to the annihilator. Hey. Now, it's a moment of celebration. You're through to the annihilator. That's fine. Any more of that messing? When Cease has been called and taken on the house robot, you've been given a yellow card. Any more of that, you're going to get kicked out of the competition, all right? Uh -oh. <laughs> easy, though, wasn't it? Um, yeah, fairly easy. <laughs> I love your driving. But the way the tools, they, they were difficult to get underneath. Yeah, I thought they were quite heavy as well. Yeah, just seemed to, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. when, when you pick them up. Yeah. But come on, Kim, I mean... That was great. I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the Annihilator, though? Oh, that's going to be tough. Six robots all going head to head. Last man standing goes through. Yeah. 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 When you're fighting with more than one robot, um, what's your tactics? I mean, you have to have eyes in the back of your head, don't you? No, you just go for whatever's in front. Whatever's <laughs> in front. You always do that, though. You mean, Sorry. ladies and gentlemen, Sorry. panic attack! Thank you very much. There's confirmation. Panic Attack joining Atomic 2 in our Annihilator finale. We still have four mayhem battles to decide those remaining places, though. It's a date that will go down in robo history. Two of our house robots want to fight three teams. The chance to cause more destruction than you've ever seen before. So, Julia, are the challengers still in the building? Or have you done the sensible thing and already legged it? No, Craig, they haven't done yet. They are still here. But teams, if you do want to back down at this stage, we wouldn't hold it against you. What do you think we're going to do? They're going to get mullered. It's about time those house robots got their comeuppance. Singer, do you realise the kind of damage you could take in this fight? Damage? This is what we've been waiting for. We're going to go in there and we're going to kick some house robot butts. And the Scorpion team, they're completely mad. Why are you putting yourselves through this? It's a good way to test Scorpion. That is one way of looking at it. It's these guys up against the house robots in a straight out and out fight. This really has history in the making. Oh boy. You're still going for it? No. Madness. What do you reckon, Jonathan? Mad or just plain, well, brave? <laughs> 
Well, crazy, 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 especially the Plunderbird team. I like the claw, but I think the house robots can get to the track system. Stinger, a little bit unpredictable, could have control problems against the house robots. And as for Scorpion, no, 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 no. The house robots will crush the insect. It's a massive night for us, Craig, but what an even bigger night it is for the audience. Too right, Jonathan, you wise monkey, you. Now, are we pumped up for this or what? I want the house robots to win. <laughs> so let's bring on the intrepid teams hoping to crush the rebellion. Go ballistic for Plunderbird, Stinger, and Scorpion! Ladies and gentlemen, stand by. In the booth together, Stinger on the left, Plunderbird on the right hand side, and there's the Scorpion team as well, the little Sarah Bell. For us, dead metal with the pincer, yeah. the 3000 RPM sword. Also thrown in for fun, shunt with the axe and the scoop. Three against two, we still think they're good odds. Not bad, not bad. There's the three, here come our two. Shunt first of all against the scorpion with that cutting disc at the back. Shunt beginning to move away from scorpion. There's Stinger being thrust away by dead metal. Well, they're very brave to go in against our house robots. Ooh. We know that because house robots are out of the CPZ. They can do whatever they want in this. No holds barred. And we've got the flipper as well. Sorry, didn't we tell you about that? Ha <laughs> ha, too late now, isn't it? To find out what we've got up our sleeve. We've got weapons like that and axle grinders and flamethrowers and torches and goodness knows what. We're not going to lose this, let me tell you. There's dead metal in on Stinger. Now beginning to be a little bit frightened, are we? Stinger activates the pit button. Who's going to go down there? Is that a little bit rash? Scorpion being tagged. Who had to go? The ref bot there. He's not part of it. Shunt with a little push and Plunderbird have gone. Well, they were hardly in the action there at all, were they? Brian Kilburn and Mike Onslow. There's Stinger, but Dead Metal is making a cursory glance, rather cumbersome push as well. And Shunt has the Scorpion of Jeff Smith and John Bell and his daughter Sarah. Scorpion has been pinched and stung. Stinger's still alive, just about. Scorpion can't get away. Stinger's been clutched by Dead Metal. The wheels are spinning, but there's no one at home, boys. Down in the pit, they cry. <laughs> the Scorpion's on the flame pit. Again, you see, we hold all the aces. Were you brave or were you foolhardy? Who volunteers these days for anything? You did. Ha ha, we've got you now, says Dead Metal. Stinger in the clutches. Oh! oh and we forgot to give you another little item of news. We can bring on a substitute like Matilda. Bye bye, Scorpion. Yes, our Sting in the tail was our sub, our super sub, the pretty Matilda. And Stinger's all that's left, and there's little left of Stinger. Inside those wheel ups, all the electrics and all the mechanics and all the machinery. And we're gonna mash it and bash it and tear it and slice it. Dead metal's in there as well. Matilda comes in with a flywheel spinning. Down, down, go, go, go. Only seven seconds for Stinger to survive. But we have our revenge. The house robots came out to play, and they've enjoyed their picnic in the arena. And how? Bad. Total carnage. Total mayhem. What a brilliant house robot rebellion. Let's hear it for Stinger. They took on three house robots and survived. Let's hear for Stinger. Go Stinger, out of all our robots, we choose the cream here on Robot Wars Extreme. Bye bye. Uh -huh. well, thank you. Hold up. Next time on Dragon Ball Z.
next time on Robot Wars Extreme, the best of the best. Turn up the heat in our All-Stars quarterfinals. Okay, we look forward to that, boys and girls. Uh, so we'll, we'll start off. Let's see if we get the list real quick, even though obviously it's not going to have all of it. Uh, where's this darn list? All right, we'll, we'll back up for a second here. Uh, go like that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little razzle-dazzle. Hold on a second. Just... So real quick, let me start see if we can get all good stuff here we'll go like that like that uh, okay so I'll, I'll start with this main event thing here i'll be 100 percent honest this is probably right now the weakest episode of extreme let's make sure it's on the screen for you guys okay yeah this was uh to me personally one of the weakest uh episodes uh by far right now just like just to be honest uh as always is that um the robots and this would just, eh. And, and here's the thing. You got this main event, which is the one I was looking forward to the most. Uh, and um, this rebellion, right? So one, one thing that we've always kind of wanted is, hey, let's have a bout with the house robots. You know, they're always interfering. Sometimes they're getting in the way of bouts. Uh, so definitely think this is a brilliant idea, something that, uh, you know, I would like to see more of in the future. But let's get... And this is, I don't know how this pans out or anything like that. Or, you know, uh, you don't have the robots there at the scene or whatever. Let's get some of the best robots uh, to go against some of the house robots there. Now, I know if they would have had probably kill a lot, man, these guys probably get wrecked even more. But um, I definitely think, though, even though you had one robot, the Scorpion, not to be too overcritical on it, um, but not. Uh, without sounding rude, it's not a top tier robot, right? Um, so get one of those, you know, replace that one out, get something a little bit stronger. I, I didn't mind, St obviously, Stinger is one of the best robots there. Plunderbird with the kind of not so good track record. So, um, definitely felt like that would be one of the robots that would be like, all right, let's do this. So, I, I respect it. It's cool and stuff like that, but I think this is such a great opportunity. I hope there'll be more rebellions on it. I'll have to stay tuned to figure that out uh, in the future. Um, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, get some of the top robots, and then you got yourself a real crazy main event. I can't help but keep thinking of WCW every time I'm watching this series in particular with all the special effects, the graphics, the belt. Uh, you know, so every time I think I'm like turned into Monday Night Nitro, uh, WCW, uh, you know, into the 1999, uh, journey, uh, competing against the Attitude Era, uh, you know, against the WWF at that time, man. So yeah, every time I see this thing, man, I can't stop thinking about WCW. Uh, the main event was at least for me the best, uh, out of this thing, uh, I probably dare say the second one was the the panic attack, even though he made quick work of it, still was enjoyable. Uh, sometimes, yeah, it does kind of suck that you know the bout ends a little quickly, but at least it didn't end like in five seconds. So I, I I'll give it that panic attack. Strong robot. Uh, let's see. So we got Ming three Mega Morg. Um, kind of cool. It was a that was probably my third favorite bout of this one, at least. You know, working with what I got for episode nine, um, Mink Three's outfit, love it, love it, love it. Um, the robot, not that bad at all. You know what I mean? Very cool. Definitely, obviously inspired by uh, you know Razor, and, and that, that's not a bad, it's not a bad choice. Uh, you know, Razor is proven to be very, you know, uh, he's one of the most destructive. Uh, you know, robots in the series out up until where we're at right now. And um we love to see it. We also saw it from the other team as well. Um so for a minute I was thinking that was the other robot, but uh later into the series and shit. But it's nice to see. So yeah, you really don't have many robots that are kind of similar to Razor. Now we got three uh total, at least from what I'm seeing here. But uh Megamore you know, it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. But I was glad that Ming uh, pulled out the, the W on that one. Uh, Tornado, the challenge belt. We got to get somebody, bring it really bad on the third one. We need we need a top tier 
uh, competitor on it because uh, the same way that Bayamoff got tested in that third one against a strong competitor, Tornado, which, uh, you know, uh, blew out the competition in that one. Um, I'd like to see another, you know, solid, solid robot uh, come in here and fight. Because sometimes, like, the thing is, uh, there's different levels to robots as far as how I feel, like different tiers. Uh, you know, you got some top tier, uh, you know, and I hate to be doing like a chart, you know, like uh, of some of these robots. But, yeah, some of these robots are, are a little lackluster. So, uh, but I think that Tornado, the hell of a robot, that thing is, it's like the little engine that could. It just keeps going. Once it starts hitting you and it's dragging, it's got good pushing power. It's fierce. That new weapon thing that they said to watch out is something I'm looking out for. Um, yeah, that that is a, a tough little robot. I forgot about this uh, this bout here, but this was this was a good one at least for t Tornado's sake. There, uh, you know, obviously these guys joking and messing around about like, yeah, we let you, you know, some of these guys and some of these bouts are like, yeah, we let you guys win. Found that, uh, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you're laughing at it. It's funny, um, but yeah, I just just feel like something was missing on this episode as far as like, ah, it just felt a little lackluster. Uh, the tag team bout was, yeah, this is where it was. It was like, eh, you got, you got Cerebus again. And uh, I, I hate to be, you know, overly negative on some of these robots, but man, it, Cerebus robot just reminds me of hungry, hungry, hungry hippos, but with no bite, absolutely no bite, uh, you know, whatsoever. Yeah. It lasted longer than Thermidor, um, which is unfortunate for Thermidor, but, uh, yeah, the other two teams. Uh, you know, it's just this was probably the weakest bout for me here. This is when I was kind of feeling like I was in a low uh, and I needed to take a nap or something like that. Um, you know, but how would you guys rank this episode for you all? Um, you guys can let me know that. One thing I will say about Shere Khan, I love the, the robot's design. One thing it needs is just some sort of self writing mechanism. I would have loved to see, uh, you know, more of that robot. Definitely looked real cool. Looks very interesting. Uh, we come to expect Vitor at some moment is probably going to have a little bit moment going into the fire. You know, you come to expect these things. Panic attack. Great driver, great team. Uh, you know, wonderful robot, you know, sportsman, all that stuff. Uh, you can't praise that enough. So it'll be interesting to see when they get to the other annihilators, who's going to be up in that, uh, up into that mix. And then, you know, like I said, with the, the main event, um, I think that kind of at least gave me some sort of joy to it but um other than that like you know this was for me by far the weakest episode uh of the series and stuff like that um but again you know you're gonna have you know sometimes you're gonna have a show you're gonna have a, a couple episodes that kind of you know are not that good you know what i mean but we're gonna still continue watching uh robot wars uh you know what i mean but they can't get I know it's, you know, it's probably difficult to, you, you can't get bangers every time. I understand that stuff, but um, there's ways to work that, man. Put some of the more um, better robots. Yeah, I understood that the, um, uh, the, damn, what was that lobster shit? The one, the, the one that ended there with the young girl that she said uh, that, you know, she want to test what the robots do. Fair, that's definitely fair enough and stuff like that, but uh you know, um, you're going against some of the house robots, so maybe not the best test there. I mean, I really felt they put another third solid robot there. You got yourself a, a, a banger of a main event there. But, yeah, that's it. That's it. I won't keep shitting on the, the episode anymore and stuff like that. I, I know you guys love the show, but we're always going to give that 100% honesty there. Yeah, if the episode's not that great, it's okay. We move on to another one, and hopefully the next episode will redeem itself a little bit. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Peace.